we're going to kind of move into some of the more nitty gritty understanding of why the relational database model was developed and how it has really uh, improved data management uh, compared to the pre-database days. And we're going to illustrate this by talking about three limitations of file processing systems and also two fundamental problems that are kind of interconnected with these limitations. So if we look at kind of the old school way of thinking about storing and managing data. So this is if we're not using a database at all, we're just gonna store our data in files, okay? And if you've ever done any just introduction to programming course, if you've ever done programming in Java or C Sharp or C++ or Python or whatever, uh, one of the exercises that you'll do throughout an introduction course is to write data to a file. Okay. Uh, it might be a comma separated file or a tab delimited file or an XML file or something like that. But it's very common for applications to write data out to a file at some, at some point. And this used to be the way that all data was stored and managed. And so for each application, it would maintain its own data, data file. Okay, uh, and inside the application, it would specify what this data file is supposed to look like. Okay, so if we had uh, within the university, let's say three different applications, one for processing data about students, one for processing data about employees of the university or faculty and staff, and then a third application for uh, processing like alumni relations, you would have three different applications that each kind of individually manage their data. Okay, so we can get by like this, but there's going to be some problems. This is what we're going to talk about. The three big limitations that we see with this type of architecture is that we're going to have a lack of data integrity, uh, meaning that across these separate applications or these separate systems, we're going to have values that may be inconsistent or get out of date or just be incorrect, right? So if you looked up a user, if a user was in two systems, you look them up in one system, you might get one value for, for example, their phone number. And in another system, you would get a different value because they're isolated. They're not sharing this data. So a lack of data integrity. We can have a lack of standards where we might have data, uh, the same piece of data, but stored in different formats, which can make it hard to uh, have interoperability between the systems. It can just be confusing in general. And then we're also going to see a lack of flexibility and maintainability because since the structure of the data is defined within the application, making changes to the data structure is going to require making or going to uh, yeah, require making changes within the application. So in the you know Java or C sharp or whatever the application is written in, in that code itself, okay, which is just a pain. It's not something we want to be doing a lot. And these limitations are all stemming from this fundamental problem or these two fundamental problems that we have a lack of data integration. Okay, the data, the data are isolated from one another and we have a lack of independence between the application and the data. They're very tightly intertwined and that leads to problems. Okay, so when we separate the data from the application, we have a lot of great benefits. We have a situation where many applications can use one copy of the same data and the data can be updated independently of the application and the data and the data structures can be modified without having to know anything about the programming of the application itself. Okay. So looking back at the old way of data management. So we have these three applications in the university, our student application, our faculty and staff or our employee application and our alumni application. And let me pose a question to you. Would it be possible for one individual, one person to be simultaneously a student at the university and an employee of the university and also an alumni of the university. I see a thumbs up coming in. 
So if I, you know, did my undergrad at the University of Houston, right? And then I graduated, so I was a student, and then I became an alum, but then I got hired by the University of Houston, and so now I'm an employee, so I'm simultaneously an alum and an employee. And then while I'm working here, I decided to go back and do my MBA or my master's in business analytics. And I'm a student again while I'm still an employee, while I'm also an alum. So I could easily be uh, all three of these things at the same time. And in this case, I would have data in all three of these separate applications that are all managing their data independently. Okay, so let's think about how this could be a data integrity issue, right? How data could get out of sync. So let's imagine I, I'm a faculty or I'm an I'm a employee and I'm a student and I'm an alum and I move, right? And so since I am an employee, one of the first things I wanna do is update my address in the employee management system because I wanna make sure that I still get my paycheck, right? So I'm definitely gonna go update my address in this faculty and staff application. And since I'm actively a student, there's probably a good chance that my address would also get updated in this student application, but I'm probably not going to be reaching out proactively to the alumni center because basically what they're doing is just hitting me up for money every couple of months. So I'm not like going out of my way to update my address there. But now we're in a situation where I have one address, my new address in these two applications, and I have an old out of date address in the alumni application. And so now without the uh, benefit of understanding what's happened, if you query these three systems, you're gonna get two different addresses for me. And you wouldn't really know necessarily which one is correct, right? We have a lack of integrity because we don't know what the true data is, okay? So that's the issue around the lack of integrity. Data might get updated in one system, but, uh, but not in another system. And then, you know, multiply this by many systems and uh, we just have no idea what the true answer is, okay? There's also this issue of standards because when you're defining what the data looks like in the application itself, the format that we store the data in is really going to be up to the developer who developed that application. And oftentimes there's going to be multiple uh, pretty reasonable ways to store the same type of data, um, but we can run into some issues here. So let's. Uh, let's imagine for just a moment that the developer who created this student processing application, the way they like to store the phone number is uh, in this format where we have in parentheses the area code, right? And right where we have something like that. Hello, is that updating? There we go. Right, so let's imagine that the uh, developer of the student application likes to store their phone numbers this way, which is a perfectly fine way to do this. But one thing that I'll point out to you, because computers and databases are very picky about uh, exactly how many characters things are and how things are structured. So let's count up how many characters this is. We start with this parentheses, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, because spaces are characters, just like any number or letter as far as a computer goes. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. So the developer of the student application has chosen to store phone numbers as this 14 character string. Okay. Let's imagine the developer of the alumni application says they like uh, they like to store the phone number a little bit differently they're going to use the dash notation so we're going to have 713743-1234 okay so now in this case we're storing the phone number as 1234567891011 12 characters okay so now what's going to happen when we need to copy this phone number from the student application down to the alumni application? Okay, 
Well, since the alumni application is expecting the phone number to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 digits long, when we copy this phone number down here, what we're going to get is open parenthesis, 713, close parenthesis, space, 743, dash, 1, 2, and then the last two digits of the phone number are going to be cut off, right? So now we've corrupted our data because we had two different data standards that were both really perfectly fine ways to store a phone number, but just not interoperable with one another, right? And of course, it would be perfectly fine to store the phone number in the 10-digit fashion without uh, these two dashes in there as well. And we would have just truncated more of the phone number in that case, All right? Another issue around data standards is uh, think about storing an address, right? So you've got something like, you know, 123 Main Street in Houston, Texas, 77018. Okay. So is this entire thing the address? Yeah, that actually is reasonable to say that that entire thing is the address. What I personally like to do is break this down into like street address, city, state, zip, so that we store the address as four separate elements. Some other developers I know like to store the street number, the street name, the city, state, and zip as five different data elements, okay? Three perfectly fine ways to store an address but if we're not storing it the same way in all of these applications, then when we try to copy the address from one application to another, we're gonna have problems, right? We're gonna lose data, corrupt data. It's just not going to work well, okay? So we have this issue of standards. And then the issue with flexibility is when we define the structure of the data in the application, if we want to change the structure of the data of the of the data like for example if we get tired of corrupting all of our phone numbers and the alumni center says you know what we need to change the way we're storing the phone number we need to do the parentheses and and all that you've got to get someone who knows java or c sharp or whatever this application is written in to come change that in the code, recompile the application, and then push out to all the users the new version of the application. It's a major headache, right? That's not the situation we want to be in. So this is our, our problem with integrity standards and, uh, and flexibility. And this is all due to the lack of integration and because we have not separated the data from the application. So what we want to do in this database way of thinking is to integrate the data. So we have one central data store here, which is managed by our database management system. And then all of our applications connect to this database through the DBMS, okay? And so this way, we don't have the issue of when we update uh, our phone number in the employee application, it's updating that, that address or that phone number in the one place that it's stored. So now that data is just kind of automatically updated in all the other applications that are connecting to this database, right? And it would be impossible to have a problem around a lack of standards because we're only storing the phone number one time, right? So it's got to be in the same format because it's only stored one time, right? And then as far as the lack of flexibility, well, if we want to change the format of the, uh, of the phone number, or if we wanted to start capturing additional data about people, like the email address for a new application, we don't have to change anything in our application programming. All we have to do is change the structure within the DBMS, which is a, uh, a somewhat less daunting task, generally speaking. And then one more benefit that I'll point out to you here is let's imagine now that we wanted to add 
a new application, right? We're doing more things at the university and we don't want to just manage our students and our employees and our alumni, but maybe we want to have an application for uh, like managing our intramural sports teams or something like that. Well, instead of starting from scratch and having to get data about all of our students and export it and get it into some format that this new application can use, uh, assuming that this is something that's you know approved and supported by the university, our new intramural sports application can just connect to the database management system and now you've got access to uh, all of the data about your students, right? So it you know just provides a much uh, kind of cleaner road to development for for new applications. So when we move away from this isolated and segregated data and move toward integrated data, we get all kinds of great great benefits. And we actually see this in a lot of places in our life with uh, kind of the uh, with the dominance of cloud computing now and that we have fewer uh, what we call fat client applications installed directly on our machine and accessing data that is on your computer and now more and more web-based applications that are accessing centrally located data that is centrally located in the cloud, right? And so, for example, uh, back in the late 90s and through the 2000s, uh, if you wanted to play music on your computer, this was uh, one of the greatest music players, Winamp, right? And Winamp had all kinds of uh, functionality for uh, managing your songs and creating playlists and playing MP3s and things like that. But it was all locally stored and locally managed. So I had my computer at work and I had my computer at home. And when I added new songs to my computer at work, well, they didn't show up on my computer at home. I had to take another copy of that MP3 and take it home. And if I updated a playlist, I had to either make the same update at home or I had to uh, make a copy of the playlist and, uh, and uh, take it home with me, right? So this is that issue of the data being isolated. And we have these, these independent stores of data. And of course, today, the world we're living in is all about streaming music, right? So if you're using Spotify or uh, Google Play Music or Apple Music or whatever on your computer at home and you go to your computer at work, you're going to have all the same uh, library of music, the same uh, history. If you run it on your phone, right, you've got all access to kind of the same same uh, same playlist, same music, same same everything because this is a centrally located data store, right? In the Google data center or the Apple data center or wherever it is you're, uh, you're streaming your, your music from. So these limitations of file processing system, we have the data integrity limitation, we have the limitation around standards, and we have the limitation that uh, it is less flexible and it's more difficult to make changes to your data structure because you have to do that in the application instead of just being able to do it within the uh, within the DBMS. And the two fundamental problems that lead uh, to this is a lack of integration of our data. So having the separate data stores instead of having one integrated data store and then the lack of separation of the data and the application, right? It's problematic when we define what the data is going to look like in the application. We want to define what the data looks like in the database. That's what gives us our flexibility.